Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Angel Villar and I am a systems engineer at VMware. On this video, we are going to see an introduction to the NSXT platform. So, what are the main characteristics of NSXT? First, it is a multi hypervisor SDM platform, supporting ESXi and KVM at launch time. Also, it is completely decoupled from vCenter, so all configuration is done via the NSX API or the NSX GUI. It provides distributed services across all hypervisors. On the initial release, this will be distributed routing and distributed firewall. It will support VMs as well as containers. It's been designed as a high available platform on which management, control and data plane components can be scaled out. It provides great performance by leveraging DPDK libraries. And it's being built with a scaling mind to fit the most demanding environments. What are the NSXT components and architecture? So in the data plane, NSXT uses kernel modules in both ESXi and KVM, so it provides in-kernel services across all hypervisors. There are also edge nodes, which could be VM or bare metal form factor, and that connect the NSX environment with the physical environment at layer 3. And there is also a layer 2 bridge component that allows to extend the same IP subnet between the physical network and the NSX networks. On the control plane, there is a highly available control cluster that has the runtime state of, of the environment. There is a local control plane component that runs on the host and establishes the connection back to the control cluster. On the management plane, there is also a cluster of NSX managers where all configuration is done either through APIs or the GUI. And NSXT can be consumed either through OpenStack, container orchestration platforms or any other mechanism that calls the NSX APIs. If we look at the NSXT download page, we can see that the NSX manager and controllers can run either on ESXi or KVM, and that the NSX Edge can be a VM on ESXi or a bare metal server. Let's now look at the main differences versus the NSX for vSphere platform. The first one is the overlay encapsulation protocol. NSXT uses Genev because it allows to add additional context into the overlay header which in turn will allow NSXT to provide advanced functionalities in future releases like distributed network encryption or end-to-end -end telemetry. If we look at the headers, we can see the VXLAN1 is a fixed 8-byte field, while the GNIF header allows for additional options. The second main difference is that NSX for vSphere has a distributed and a centralized routing layer, while on NSXT all routing is distributed. Let's look at the details. On NSX for vSphere, we have our distributed routing DLR on the picture and the NSX Edge, which is a VM that routes between NSX and the external networks. If we have two tenants or two projects that they need to talk to each other, typically each one will have its own DLR and both of them will communicate through the NSX Edge. If we look at the physical topology, even if VMs from two projects are on the same host, traffic need, needs to go back and forth to the NSX Edge. NSXT also has two tiers of routing, but now they are both distributed across ESXi and KVM hosts. They are called Tier 0 router, which could be thought as the provided router, and Tier 1 router, which could be thought as the tenant router. If we look at the physical topology, both routers sit in kernel in all transport nodes. Now, if VM A from the orange tenant or project wants to talk to VM B from the blue tenant or project, communication will stay on the host. If you think about containers or open stack projects, this is a very efficient approach that allows for better performance and a higher scale. The last main difference versus NSX for vSphere is that since NSXT is decoupled from vCenter, there is no concept of vSphere clusters, so there are no compute clusters and node management clusters. In NSXT, all nodes that are part of the data plane are called transport nodes. This includes the edge nodes which are the ones that run stateful services and the connection to the external networks. The edge nodes leverage the DPDK libraries, which allow them to achieve line rate performance even for small packet sizes. And this concludes this introduction to NSXT. There is more information available on the web, including white papers and configuration guides. Once again, VMware proves itself as a key enabler for the digital era, providing security intrinsic to the infrastructure now in multiple hypervisors, streamlined operations and automated deployment again in multiple hypervisors, and in short, a complete platform for advanced networking and security across hypervisors. I hope you have enjoyed the session, and don't forget to check my YouTube channel where this and many other NSX videos are uploaded.
Thank you.